Good evening, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. So tonight I decided I want to play something different. Uh, let's just switch this out. So tonight I'm actually going to be playing some Aliens Fire Team Elite. I bought this game a while ago, like a young while ago, like quite a while ago. And I think I did one mission and duck never came back to it. And so I decided tonight, well, fuck it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to play some of a game that I haven't played in a while. Um, I was a massive fan, or still am actually a massive fan of the Aliens franchise. When I refer to that, I refer to Aliens 1, 2, and 3, Fuck Resurrection. Um, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator 2 was okay. The Predator movies, some of them okay, some of them were shit. And then Elysium and the new Alien, or Elysium, um, Prometheus, sorry. Prometheus and that new fucking, what was that new movie? Yeah, it was shit. It was dog shit. So the original one with um, Sigourney Weaver playing Ripley. That for me was the ultimate. So that's why I originally got this game. So I've gone through the tutorial. I've passed off the tutorial. Now it's basically just a case of doing missions. So tonight I wasn't in the mood for Risk of Rain. But I wasn't in the mood for anything else. So I thought, you know what? Let's come back to a game that I haven't played in, in forever and a day. So I just want to check something quickly. Oh, that's there. I just want to check the quality, like how loud everything is. Everything's fine. I just want to check the quality, like how loud everything is. Everything's fine. I think the game sound is very quiet. Okay, that should be better. Now I had to figure out where the fuck to go. I'm Ibrahim Savani, Colonial Marines Intelligence, Surveillance, and Recon Service. Its owner, Seek and Company, reported the refinery was destroyed. Yet, here it floats, in a system controlled by Seek's and rival, and following up with Central. Alright, spoke to that dude. Now, where the fuck do I go? Alright, that's my loadout. I don't think I've got anything else now. I wasn't able. Yeah, I literally have only done the tutorial, so. We've got Gunner. Ooh, smart gun. Tactician, I like. Doc, Phalanx, and Lancer. Nope, I like tactician. We're gonna stick with that. Technician. Tactician. The fuck is wrong with me? Um. Now, because I did the tutorial like forever ago, I can't actually remember where to, <laughs> to access missions. So, that's clearly the armory. That is definitely a nod to... Was it the first or the second? Hey, Blue Basher, how you doing, man? Is that a nod to the first, second, or third movie? Where is it that, that Ripley's in the cargo bay and she ends up fighting off the alien with us? It's not the first one. The first one, she escapes onto the ship and that's where the alien is basically with her on the ship. That was the famous scene where she was in her underwear. But there is a scene where Sigourney Weaver ends up fighting the alien in that outfit. That's definitely been put there for a homage to that. A 
want everyone back. I forgot where the fuck to go to actually activate the mission. It's not that dude, those are Waylon Yutani since if anybody's ever played um what is that aliens game fuck my memory's going to shit priority one rescue carry on you're done you're done I hope I could visit the surface of Elikataga has over 80 years of history. I haven't played this game in forever, so I kind of forgot how to access the... How do I access my missions again? <laughs> oh, fuck. The fuck do I go for missions again? Or am I just completely missing something? What? Did I break something? This is um, Aliens Fire Team Elite. Didn't keep the ship stores balanced and we try to go FTL. You all requisitions come with free cornbread. I got a nice load piled in the back. I, I got no money to be able to buy perks, kits, sentry guns, anything like it. There have been an eight. I can't remember where to go to activate missions or to select missions. You knives and sharp sticks. I'm ready for another mission. Thank you. I your mama. Priority one. Priority one rescue. And I'll just do a candid mission, challenge cards, matchmaking, private game, and launch mission. Matchmaking, private, launch mission. Hanukkah is somewhere up on Katanga's mainframe decks. And let's go. He's been searching for a safe place to hide from all the Xenos aboard. Our mission hasn't changed. Find him, get him Oh god, I'm probably gonna suck at this. I haven't played this in a while. Uh, Blue, just let me know if the sound and everything is good. Honaker, you out there? Staff Sergeant Herrera, Colonial Marines. Sound is good. Awesome. Thanks. And you're hearing the game pretty decent as well. So if you're a massive fan of the Alien franchise, you might enjoy this. Um, how do I put down my sentry gun again? Sentry gun. Thank you. Sentry deployed. Yee. Or oh, I can just press Q. Q would have been a lot easier. Oh, uh, I've got two. Oh, okay, let's not do that again. Okay, so I've got sentry guns. Okay. Uh, did you ever watch any of the movies? Can I pick you up again? Oh yeah, well you're staying there. Oh damn, okay. 
If you, okay, so I would suggest anybody who's never watched the Alien movies to watch it, but it's also difficult to suggest it to a person because, like, the first movie I think came out in 1974, so it is like on the older side of things. So I know it's pretty difficult to watch for a lot of people just because of how old the movies are. But it's good. Like, it's really good. Like, it got, like, a massive cult following when the movies came out. Nothing to worry about. We're professionals. Like, it's nothing to write home about, but it's... For me, it's just really fucking good. No, it had... Um... Okay, so, modern Hollywood didn't ruin it. They tried to ex... They did what they did with the Star Wars movies. So, we all agree, well, most of us agree that the first seven movies... Seven or six. And Pass Strikes Back. We all agree that the original trilogy, the original Star Wars movies are good. And I would maybe include Rogue One into that just because Rogue One simply just expands on. Actually, just give me a second. Yeah, the original six. So the original six are phenomenal. Um. Rogue One, I would still include into that list because Rogue One fits in between the original six. It's not, they didn't try and continue anything. They just explained how to get the plans for the Death Star. So with the Alien franchise, they did the same. So there's the original Aliens movies, one, two, and three with Sigourney Weaver playing as Ridley Scott. And then there's obviously the Alien versus Predator movies and then all the Predator movies. The problem is off of the Alien franchise, they then tried to create a prologue and then a yeah, yeah with prometheus and then with the that new alien movie i can't remember what the fuck its name was yeah so it, it's a perfect example of there were three movies that were absolutely fucking phenomenal then they came out with that bullshit prometheus that kind of ruined the idea of the aliens and then they made one more movie after that i can't remember what it was it was alien something and over there they also ruined it because like what we know the alien franchise to be like you don't see the aliens that well they're kind of hidden they stick to the shadows they're fucking fast the latest movie just made them seem like little bitches to be honest but if you can and you've got the patience for it 100 percent the original trilogy is worth a watch I don't know where these things are going to come from, but I've got a funny feeling I'm going to need one of those down. Oh, I'm glad you're here. I can see you on my monitors now. Wait, Xenomorphs, heading to you. Let us handle it. That's my guys. Nope, yeah, they come. That's a runner. A spitter hit me from behind, I think. them all on the right.
ammo is low. What the fuck is this thing shooting at? Did you make any arrests? We can discuss operations on an open channel. No, they didn't. They they can't. I'm I agree with you one hundred percent. I think Star Wars got absolutely destroyed. I think the problem was is So Star Wars in my opinion, it was never like a gruesome, dangerous or like scary movie, but it was never really supposed to be a family friendly show either and i feel like i feel like star wars uh, how do i how do i put this star wars in my opinion they took a franchise that was good they saw hey there's a potential year to, uh, it had logic yeah that's just it the original story had a the original Sorry, my, I'm, I'm going in like a billion different directions here. I'll clean up my train of thought now. Okay, everything calm for a second? Cool, let's go. Okay, so with the original Star Wars movies, the original Star Wars movies was amazing. The way everything was set out, there was purpose, there was reason. People like Luke Skywalker, um, Luke Skywalker, he learned to become powerful. Um, Anakin Skywalker had to learn and struggle this and against Skywalker had to struggle that's why he became such a good protagonist it was just everything about it was set up correctly the storytelling was great everything was phenomenal with the new Star Wars shit that's come out dude it, it's pissed me off so badly the fact that motherfuckers can get stabbed with lightsabers multiple times and still survive like, if you go back to, like, I think it's the very first movie, Phantom Menace. Oh, fuck. If you go back to the very first fucking movie, that shit was cutting through solid metal doors. Are you trying to tell me you stab somebody with that thing, that bitch is gonna survive? Hell no. Okay, it's paused. My personal belief is that if they instead of trying to capitalize on what already existed if they had taken the idea of the star wars universe and expanded on it that would have been fucking phenomenal so after the empire and everything collapsed or let's say after the events of um, order 66 and all the jedis were killed off and then obviously we went into um the, the, um, the destruction of the death star and the emperor etc etc once that's once that was done that story should have ended there there would have been nothing wrong with them expanding into a new story completely introduce new protagonists new antagonists new characters people to fall in love with all over again hey johnny brisk welcome to the stream man if they had done that i think it would have gone a lot further the reason why my opinion the reason why darth vader worked so well is because for a long time based on how the movies were released for a very long time nobody had any idea who it was or what he was about where he came from what his backstory was but the problem is in the new movies kylo ren within like the first fucking 20 minutes of meeting the dude he's already taken off his mask the thing that made darth vader iconic was not the fact that he was anakin skywalker before it's not the fact that he betrayed the jedi order it was not the fact that he fucked up a whole bunch of kids the thing that made darth vader iconic was his presence was his look was his power raw power the mask was who he was and kylo ren they fucked that they gave they basically made him a teenage little boy <laughs> and no, I do not do commentary videos, but I'm guessing that's something I should maybe start. And hey, JJ, how you doing, my man? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good evening. Got a mechanical failure in the door. Ambush in the rear.
I think you have that commentary voice. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Yeah, so and that's just my personal opinion. They fucked Star Wars so badly. For those of you that don't know how we quite got onto the Star Wars discussion, uh, we basically started talking about this game, um, Aliens and the Alien franchise, and what Hollywood did to it after the original trilogy with Sigourney Weaver. And, yeah. Then we went and it devolved into... Um, Oh, hold on. I'm not going to start that yet because I know what's going to happen with that shit. And then it devolved into the fuck up of um, Lucasfilms being absolutely being destroyed by Disney. Okay, my tower blew up. No, and th the shit thing is, I don't think they're ever going to realize it. They're just going to keep pumping out shit after shit after shit, hoping to capitalize and hoping that one of them maybe, maybe becomes a success. Ooh, my ammo is very low. Um, Ash, you'll have to cut the refrigerant to reach me. I um, broke the valve, tossed the wheel in a side room. And you're 100%. They're not, they're not going to realize it. I don't think they care either. I think the biggest issue, it's all about making money though. Kids and families now, and you might not like it, but they're doing pretty good. You see, that's just it. They've become this, this titanic of a company this conglomerate that they've stopped caring about their their viewers their communities their people their families they it's all about money i think i actually watched a good video a while ago about how it's turned into like a syndicate almost uh what was i looking for here Okay, wasn't looking for anything here, apparently. My opinion with the Star Wars franchise is they've disconnected themselves in every possible way. So, they are not entertaining the original Star Wars fans in any form or way. So they've disconnected themselves from the original crowd. Highly disconnected himself from the original OG fans. The new stories are written so shit and so haphazard. You can't really pick up where the story continues from. Simply because it links so much into the original trilogy. That you'd need to watch the original trilogy. But the people who know the details about the original trilogy just do not care. They've, dis they've put themselves in this unique position where they've disconnected themselves from the OG fans and from potential new fans. What's happening now? Uh, let's do this.
kind of like I'm 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 kind of just guessing at this point. I haven't played this game in so long. Yeah, this is getting out the direction I needed to go. Wait, what did I do? Why am I this side? Oh no, I fucked it. No, what did I do? That's... How do I switch this? How do I switch this? What did I do? Yeah, my friend's busy dying. I'm trying to figure out my camera. Just when I thought I started getting used to it. Fucking I pressed something, I don't know how to fix this. No, what did I do? Sorry. Again, okay, I'll figure that out after the fact. <laughs> Okay, it looks like it's fine now. Okay, I will continue my train of thought in like two seconds. Let me actually just get my ass out of here. We are? By what? Look up, on the data cables. Look up. Oh my god. I don't have the ammo to deal with this. Oh, there's ammo right here. Never mind. Hey, what up, Maestro? How you doing this evening, man? It's going insane. I promise I will continue my rant about Star Wars and their failings in a few minutes. And it's actually going to lead into like more topics. So I hope you guys don't mind the rant that I'm going to go on in a bit. The fuck is this thing? Oh god. Zeno is coming in from behind. The woman who, the one who came out. Her name was Monica. You see, that's how we know the original aliens to exist. You got the face huggers, they lay the egg inside of you, and then you got the chest posters, and the chest posters then um, grow into xenomorphs, and they take on properties of the host.
That is why every xenomorph doesn't look exactly the same. Alright, how do I heal myself? It's only supposed to be opened by company oh. Admins. So I've had a health pack the entire time. I'm just too fucking stupid to remember how to use it. Genius. Vibration, uh, whatever, they'll come. Be ready. Okay, I'm guessing this is where this shit starts. Interpersonal mine. Okay. So let's drop one of these. Mine's out. Let's drop one of those. One of those. And then we'll drop another one on the side. Okay. And then we grab a electroshock turret. Grab a drone. And we grab a normal turret. Anything else I can grab. Uh, that sounds about right for now. Just to give you guys a little heads up, my next rant, <laughs> continuing on the Star Wars basis, is going to touch games. It's going to touch base on games as well, uh, on what developers have done, because I think a lot of developers have gone in, gone in the same direction as what um, a lot of film studios have, and they've stopped caring about what they're creating, and they're just focusing on the money. And I'll say one word, and you guys should know exactly what I'm talking about. Blizzard. Yeah, the big boys did. The striped xenomorph. Never heard of a striped xenomorph before, but apparently it's a thing. Oh no, 100%. Overwatch 2 is the perfect example of what happens when you've got a board of directors making a game instead of gamers. It's over. Bypassing damage. Oh, Bypassing God. damage. Finally. My board's clear. Collect our man. Or something? I mean, I, I don't have a space suit. Exactly. Uh, so I got the M4A8. Oh, sorry, it's not the M4A1, it's the M4A1A. Uh, precision break, 45 rep, and 720 credits. Leveled up my gun and my class. And then just the normal score. Shit, I can't aim for anything. Okay. Well, we 
found Honecker. Now we've got to get him safely back to the Endeavor. Lieutenant Ko will bring our dropship into one of the refinery hangars. Okay. So, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Let's just do this quickly. Let me turn down the game sound a little bit. Turn down my own headset and let's get into this. So, I'm going to start off from a basis of a game that I was massively hyped for. It's going to loop around into what happened to the game. And then it's going to touch into the issues that I've got with a lot of developers nowadays. More specifically, AAA title developers. And yes, I am going to mention the quadruple A. Because that's where it's going to start. My very first issue came into play with this. Let me actually make my life a little bit easier here. Do y'all remember this bullshit? Skull and Bones. This absolute fucking train wreck of a thing. So, I only really fell in love with the Assassin's Creed games with Assassin's Creed 2, okay? That was where I started liking it. And then I played Assassin's Creed 3. It was pretty decent. But the one that had me hooked, and I think the one that had 90% of people hooked, was Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Assassin's Creed Black Flag was phenomenal because one, it took the elements that we enjoyed from Assassin's Creed, relaxed them a little bit, and focused more on the piracy of it. The open world, the ability to upgrade your ship, the ability to go do, and it just opened up this entire world to it. And then the developers, Ubisoft, decided, okay, you know what, let's capitalize on this. We have got a phenomenal concept of a game here. A game that everybody loves. All we're going to do is we're going to make a carbon copy of the game, removing completely the Assassin's Creed elements and focusing on the pirate elements, but refining it, allowing you to have different ships, allowing for a better gameplay experience, taking away the arcadey feel of what Black Flag was. And I sucked that shit up, dude. Like, I was there for it. I wanted that shit so goddamn bad. So, I think it was easily like four or five years ago when they first announced it. It was already on the Steam page as coming soon, quote unquote. So, I put it on my wish list. And every so couple of months, I would google it find out where the game is just to find out that there's been some kind of development fuck up somebody's forgotten about something they've changed development houses um they've changed fucking directors ceos managers whatever and all that we ended up realizing is when black flag sorry not black flag when skull and bones originally released the only feeling that i got was it was a piece of shit that failed that they had on their shelves in order to just dump out, get rid of it, so that they can focus on the next thing. And then for the fucking CEO, I think it was the CEO, to turn around and say that this is a quadruple A title? Go fuck yourself. And sorry if that's a bit straightforward, but that to me was a perfect example of a company that has forgotten who its gamers are. They've stopped listening to the Okay, I'm going to split it, the company and the developers, because the devs aren't necessarily the company. The company dictates everything. They dictate the direction, they dictate the focus, they dictate the time, they dictate the scope, they dictate the budget. The company dictates everything. The devs sit with the horrible situation of having to try and make that work within the time, budget, scope, and um, plan that the company has got for them so it doesn't always line up that's my personal opinion it doesn't always line up <laughs> and that's how we end up with shit like skull and bones and 
microtransactions and stuff like Overwatch, microtransactions, microtransactions, microtransactions do not bug me if it's purely cosmetic and it's got zero gameplay effect. The moment you are asking people to pay for a game, but then to actually get the content for the game, you have to pay X, whether it is a monthly, yearly, or whatever subscription to that game, I've got a problem. Why not then make the base game free and any additional outcomes that you want from that charge for those, but also keeping it realistic so that by the time you get to your quote unquote end goal, you have charged a AAA title price, not charge a AAA title price and then have a fuck ton of stuff that comes with it that you have to pay for. It pisses me off. And I think the same thing has happened within the movie world, looping around to what's happened with Star Wars and Lucasfilms, and that is politics and money has become such a big influence that it ends up fucking the genre or the group that it's based in. So... I can't think of a perfect example now, but I know there is one if I think, if I try and find hard enough. You get small indie companies that release a game and they do phenomenally well. Like I'm talking, they do fucking well. Powerworld, a simple example. Hold on, let me try, let me try release this. Uh, let me try to find this quickly. Uh, where is this? Okay, I can't seem to find the picture right now, but I'm guessing somewhere you guys would be able to find it. Um, basically, Power World, small developers, small company, they admitted. Listen, it's going to take time for content to be released. It's going to take time. We aren't a game that is AAA titled or has the budget. So we don't mind our player base going somewhere else until we get more content, until we provide you with something that you are happy with. For a developer to turn around and say they don't mind you stop using their product, until there's something better that they can offer you, that is still a company that understands gamers. They understand that a gamer wants to play different games, wants to be across genres, across different ty types of games. So don't force them to be in one game just because your pockets are a little bit dry. And sorry, JJ, just going back to your message. So this is why you want devs like Slavic for Mana Lords. Spends the time and dedication needed doing what they have to do, then releasing a demo to get feedback, then fixing the game again, then releasing it. Exactly. Oh my fucking God. The amount of early access shit that is on Steam at the moment. The amount of early access bullshit that is floating around on Steam. <clears throat> it seems like every Tom, Dick and fucking Harry, every single dude that can make a game, makes a game, doesn't finish the game, dumps it on Steam, wants to get money for it, and then never completes the game. Um, and I've got the perfect example of this, actually. Um, have any of you guys ever heard of a game called The Isle?
So, this is the aisle, okay? The aisle is a pretty decent game, okay? It's, it's not shit, it's not great, it's not fantastic, but the idea and the concept of the game is pretty awesome. So, you, in this game, you start off as a little hatchling of a dinosaur that you like, Utah Raptor, T-Rex, whatever, and that kind of stuff. You start off as a little baby, you grow, it takes you like a good couple of fucking hours to grow your dinosaur to full health, and it's a massive server, and it's a lot of PvP, okay? Cool. It's not bad. Like, I'll admit, I've got like 400 hours in this game. It can be fun. Brother, look at the release date. That is the 2nd of December, 2015, and tell me what is something you see on the main screen. It is still in early access. Like, come on. There has to be a limit. We're going on eight years in early access. Project Zomboid. Eighth of November, two thousand and thirteen. We've already passed the ten year mark with this game, and it's still in early access. Like, I get it. I truly, truly, truly get it that not every single developer has got the money to be able to, or the, the money or the team to be able to fully flush out a game as quickly as a AAA title can. I get you. I respect that 100%. Don't release it until you are close to the point of being able to call it version 1. Or, at a bare minimum, I don't understand why developers are so scared to go from early access to version 1. Because... So I'm just going to mute the sound on that quickly. Why are they so scared to go from early access to version 1? I think a lot of developers, especially the smaller indie developers, the people that keep their shit in early access for years, forget that version 1 does not mean it is your final version. You can have updates and additional content and technical reworks and all of that kind of stuff take place after the game has become version 1. So, JJ, have you played Project Zomboid at all? Have any of you played Project Zomboid? <coughs> Would you say in its current state Yeah, you see, that's the problem. In its current state, would you be comfortable in saying, so understanding it's still got bugs, every game will have bugs, would you say so you've played 17 minutes of it, would you say that the current state of the game is enough for the developer to say that this is version 1. It's not early access anymore. I'm sorry. 11 years is not early access anymore. Exactly. So it's supposed to be, I believe, and this is only my belief, I've got nothing to back this up with. My personal opinion, in there's a possibility that Early access titles get made more readily available and they get put in front of your face a lot more on Steam than what games that are fully released are. It's almost like Steam is trying to promote early access titles to try and promote 
smaller developers, which is great and all. The problem is I feel like that's causing a lot of developers to keep their shit in early access. I've got nothing, and I do believe nothing to back up that statement. But I cannot understand how some of these games stay in early access for 10, 11, 12 years. That's bullshit. But in any case, we've now done like a full circle from where we went. But yeah, no, I'm sorry. Development companies, um, production companies, Hollywood gamers, the moment they've tasted the money, And the moment the company starts growing to the point where there are shares involved that a board of direction, a board of direction, board of directors is required, that there's, it starts being viewed as a business, more so as a gamers making games for gamers. A lot of additional shit starts getting poured into it and that's how we end up with titles that are completely failing um let's go with uh, let's go with this game of the year edition for oblivion okay who remembers this absolute? This is going to be fun to listen to on the YouTube version of Stream. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. And probably somebody's going to tear me apart and say that I'm fucking mental. Probably. So who remembers this absolute? Cold of a game. Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Hells yes. So, Maestro knows it. Um, Never played Elder Scrolls. Blue, are you sure about that? Have you ever played Skyrim? never played Skyrim wow I'm not judging I'm actually impressed like I know gamers like non-gamers that know Skyrim okay so Skyrim is part of the Elder Scrolls series Skyrim specifically is the Elder Scrolls 5 Elder Scrolls 4 was um Oblivion, Elder Scrolls 3 was Morrowind, I think, Elder Scrolls 2 was Daggerfell, and I think the first one was just called Arena. So that was the life cycle of how they progressed. Elder Scrolls, oh, yes, so do I. Maestro, dude, I don't think there's anything about Skyrim that I don't know. So don't put my knowledge to the test because you're probably going to ask me a question that I don't know. <laughs> um... But the same company that developed this game uh, fucking there there and let's just fucking go with I was born in 1989 I was not born in 1988 I'm just putting in a random date is the same company that developed this fucking dumpster fire Fallout 76 This was another one of those examples where the game released and it pissed off an entire community.
there's a couple of development companies that I think are making the mistake of they've stopped caring about the gamers, their actual audience, the people who are paying the money for them to keep their doors open because now they focus on shares and investments, etc. Bethesda is one of them because Elder Scrolls 6 was announced in on June 10th of 2018 is when the game was announced and all we got all we got as an announcement was this That's it. That's all we got. In 2018, this is all we got. Now, Maestro, I get you. Brother, the first time I saw that trailer, I damn near just in my pants. Because I fell in love with the Elder Scrolls series in Oblivion. Loved it through to Skyrim. And I'm fucking excited for Elder Scrolls 6. However, that excitement was in 2018, 2019, and that excitement started becoming concern as we started getting closer to, um, well, present day. And the reason for that is simple. If we have a look at development companies and what they have tried doing with almost every single motherfucker coming out with a battle pass or trying to microtransaction the shit out of it or trying to lock stuff behind DLCs and like there are games where the game's not even finished but they've already got DLCs. The moment developers and the gaming industry started getting fucked so badly I'm starting to get very, very, very worried about what's potentially going to happen with Elder Scrolls 6. I'm scared they're going to turn it into this, the Elder Scrolls Online. Have you played this at all, Maestro? You play the, the, play the close beta. Cool. Yeah. So, tell me. What are you seeing on your page? On my page right now? So, forget about the discounted prices. Because remember, a lot of this shit has got 67, 50% discounts at the moment. Because of the, um, I think it's the summer festival, or spring, whatever. Blue, JJ, Maestro. What do you guys see on my screen at the moment? A lot of numbers. So first of all, we've got the price for the base game. Now, because I suck at this, I'll bring up a calculator over here. Big green buttons, press them all. Yeah, the kind of shit that makes my ass go fucking um, broke. So, first of all, we have got the, the price of the game. So that is normally 20 euros. Sweet. Not too bad for the price of a game. Not too bad at all. Okay. So then we have got 30 euros for the Necrom um, expansion. Plus then obviously the 9. Plus the 25. Plus another 15. 
plus another 40. Okay, so currently we're already sitting on 140 euros. Cool. On top of that, for in-game, you've now got the option to buy crowns. So I don't know the relationship of how expensive the crowns are as to the value of the crowns. So the first option for 7 euros, 750 crowns. I don't know what that can buy you. I'm not sure if that is a lot or if that is dirt. But let's make the assumption that in order to get a nice, decent number to be able to do the things you want to, let's go halfway. I'm in the US, so... It's about 150, 160 dollars. I'll I'll do the maths afterwards and just round it up for you. So let's go with euros on that. So there's another 20 euros over there. Oh, sorry. What was I fucked up my maths? What is the number I said recently? What is the first number I said? It was 130 or was it 120? Actually, blue, um, the exchange rate between the euro and the dollar is currently, for every one euro, you get $1.09. So, it's almost a one-to-one -one basis. So, you can just, you can assume it's identical. Um, let's go with 120. Let's even round it down. So, let's go with 120. And then, obviously, let's go with the 3,000 crowns. That's another 20 euros. Okay. That's just for crowns. Now, crowns are something that you are probably going to have to spend a cup or spend money on a couple of times okay sweet we can respect that so we are already looking at a base game value for the game all the dlcs and some crowns of 140 euros let's say 145 dollars No problem, Maestro. Have a lovely evening for the man. Get some rest, enjoy your night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, you deserve the rest. I'm glad you get some final, some final, get some time off. And Touching base, JJ, and Blue. Touching base on what I was mentioning originally. If Bethesda Softworks, Bethesda. Okay, so the developer is Zenimax. The publisher is Bethesda. It's an Elder Scrolls title. It's Bethesda. Elder Scrolls will always be linked to Bethesda. Because Bethesda tried the shit once already, where you've got the price of a game, the price for DLCs, plus in-game currency, Plus a fucking subscription fee that you need to pay. So you've got to pay 124 euros for a monthly subscription. Sorry, for a yearly subscription. So take that 140 and just slap that title on top of it. We're looking at 264 euros, roughly. Let's say $270, rounded. Rounded very roughly. A $270 title on playing a game. Sorry, that is to play the game how they intended you to play. And I can show you a perfect example of how they should have gone, uh, gone about this. And it exists. within this okay so here 
is a game called Warframe. Have any of you guys heard of this game before? Okay, so I've got about I've got about 600 700 hours into this game. You see over here, it's got DLCs as well. It's got 161 euros worth of DLCs. You do not need a single one of these. This is cosmetics. This is all cosmetics to make your shit look pretty. That's it. So the game is 100% free. Yes, the game does have an in-game currency called Platinum. You can spend real-world money buying Platinum. Platinum makes your life a little easier. Think of it like Path of Exile. The game is 100% free. But everything that you want to do in the game, all of its content, everything can be accessed without ever spending a cent. Does the process become a fuck ton harder and longer if you grind it without spending money? Yes, it's a free to play game. Obviously, it's going to be paying it. Now, paying in this game is not pay to win. Yes, you can buy Warframes, but you cannot buy equipment that other people do not have access to. Everybody's got access to the same shit. The Platinum just gets rid of the grind a little bit. Now that, I don't mind. And I also don't mind that because there's no PvP. Well, there is, but nobody ever does PvP in this game. This game is 100% PvE co-op. And it's fucking phenomenal. And it works. And the only thing you see on my screen here is free-to-play. And content for this game that is purely cosmetic. But there's no subscribe button. I mean, goddamn. It's got a very positive rating with over 567,000 reviews. So that's where my current issue is with the world of gamers. Well, not the world of gamers, the world of gaming development, as well as um, production studios in Hollywood. They stop caring about the customer, and the only thing they focus on is money. The argument I have heard a lot of people make is, yes, but they need money in order to make the customer happy. I'm like, yes, you are right. You are 100% right. In order for a development company to make a game that the player base will enjoy, they need money. Counter argument. If the development company focuses on the requirements and needs of its fan base and ensures that the product that they deliver satisfies their game their their community on a massively positive um percentile so let's say 70 you're never going to make everybody happy but if you can make 70 to 80 percent of your player base happy don't you think your revenue income would be a lot higher and you would stop getting negative press meaning more revenue more games to create right now the only thing that they are doing is they are creating shit which means less people pay and play it i'm sorry there are some development companies that i can see within the next three four five years not existing anymore that's my personal opinion but i could be very very wrong probably am because i'm no expert in this matter everything i've just mentioned is my opinion but 
that's where I stand. So thank you very much for coming to my TED talk. Ubisoft, I think is going to be dead within the next five years. I think Ubisoft is going to be dead. Bethesda might be able to save themselves with Elder Scrolls 6. But I think if they don't, they're also dead pretty soon after that. <sighs> and Blizzard. I think Blizzard, with their absolute failure of Diablo Immortal and then Diablo 4, that's two massive losses. I don't see them sticking around for very long. I could be wrong. I would not be surprised either. But yeah, thank you everybody for coming to my TED Talk. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> and sorry about the rant. I've got no idea how long that rant went on. But it all touches base in with what happened with Star Wars, what happened with a whole bunch of other things like the alien stuff. It's just... It irritates me when amazing franchises get ruined due to one person being stingy so what are you guys up to this evening jj blue and who else is here actually watching it says there's three viewers. I had six at one point. That was nice. But then I think my rant started and everybody ran away. No <laughs> doubt. Uh, Can I change this? So how's that going? Inventory. Uh, weak point damage. How do I actually... See, this is the problem when you haven't played a game in forever. I don't actually know where I can go and... The fuck is special stock? Oh, that just makes me pretty. Okay, fuck that noise. Um, so I've got an... So I've got this gun. Inspect this weapon. Use the buttons to the left to add. Select 10 presets for each weapon. It's the M4A13. Hold on. What am I actually wearing? It's saying I've got two options. JJ, you're not wrong. But I want them to fall and stay fallen. Fall, fall, fallen? What the fuck? 
I want them to fall and stay fallen. It doesn't help and it doesn't... It's not conducive to anybody for a company to collapse and then to be bought out by another company, but none of their habits change. They all stick to the same shit that they've been doing. Okay, I seriously don't know how the fuck to change my guns. That's the armory. You would think it would take place over there. It's the hangar. No idea what that is. If this is my loadout. Change my fucking gun. Oh, my, I just completely retarded. Okay. How can I? <clears throat> no, you're gonna abandon me, JJ. It's fine. I see how it is. I see how it is. Now I'm joking, man. I hope you have a lovely evening further. Get some rest. And look after yourself, man. Oh, that's why. Because this class can't carry that gun. That makes. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, what is the time for you right now, Blue? It's 6 p.m. Yeah, it's um, it's 11 p.m. here for me. That's kind of cool. Uh, dog technician. Let's carry on with technician. Okay, actually, now I need to turn the actual game sound up again. Doc, take a sidearm. Fight. Get him to our dropship in one piece. Okay, I think we're good to go. That's kind of nasty. Oh, I can't aim for shit, but I could shoot. Well, fuck you. I don't know if you just heard that comment. I feel like I'm being personally attacked. No idea who that person is. Swarm coming in. Sentry deployed. Swarm them from the sides. Lou, I think I've got a player in here and I've got no Jump idea who they here. are. Direct route's blocked. I got no connection to those compartments. We'll bypass below decks. No idea who that person is. <laughs> uh, 
I'm supposed to be in a private game. Yeah, current team is... Oh, wait, that might be the... Never mind. Never mind, I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute freaking idiot. That's the person I'm trying, supposed to be escorting. I'm fucking stupid. So what are you up to this evening, dude? And, dude, you missed it. I actually did a stream last night, and it was Risk of Rain 2 modded. I've got like 90 mods running, and fucking running as Goku and everything. Why is it doing this? Oh, shift actually changes. Okay. I found the button. Jeez. I can't remember the last time I played PSP. I still remember having a white PSP and this was years, like I'm talking years ago, brother. In the duct. Did they make like a, a new PSP recently or? My dad gave me his a long time ago, so he modded it. Nice. Did you mod it so you are able to play Nintendo games on it? But as far as I know, you normally can't play any Pokemon games on a PSP. As it is a very N Nintendo product. <laughs> and I'm out of bullets. And that's a problem. It's okay, brother. I like. I wanted to get hold of a jailbreak um, switch so badly at one point because I wanted to be able to do Nuzlocke challenges on the Nintendo Switch, like so badly. But yeah, no luck on that one. Well, let's put it this way: I didn't want to buy another switch when I already had one. I didn't want to buy one just so that I could do a Nuzlocke challenge for Arceus and, um, uh, was it Sword and Shield? I enjoyed Sword and Shield a lot. My only issue was with Sword and Shield and a lot of the... Pokemon games, unless you've like jailbroken it or something like that, is the fact that you you play it through once and there's no real point ever in playing it through again. Because you can't get certain Pokemon in certain areas. Like there's zero chance of me playing Pokemon Sword and Shield or Arceus in me randomly, accidentally finding a legendary within the first route or in the first open world section. It's just never going to happen. But with modded, we'll call them modded, to prevent any issues with modded ones, it's nice because you can change up the, the spawn rate. You can change up where they're going to spawn. And it, 
it makes it more fun because then each challenge and each run actually becomes a lot more interesting. So I wanted a a jailbroken switch so badly. And then I found out what they cost and I was like, no thank you. Because there was only a certain um, serial number, like a group of serial numbers that allowed it. Because all models made after that were not able to be hacked, if you want to call it that. Yes, those ones. That's what I'm talking about, the release models. Oh, that's insane. Something that completely breaks my brain as well is I don't understand why developers and that kind of stuff developers that open their games up to be modded are legendary developers because they understand that they provide the base entertainment and the community will provide the rest of the entertainment through mods which keeps players with their games the moment developers ban block or punish people for trying to create mods for their games it's like you guys are completely fucking yourselves just allow people to mod your game the game is still yours all of the intelligence and and like intellectual property is still yours allow people seeing goku and Little cup exactly and how much fun did you have fucking around with goku and lethal company and the developers know that. <laughs> so, here's a good example. Risk of Rain. You and I love Risk of Rain. You and I love playing it. The base game is freaking amazing. How much better is it when you can start fucking around with mods? How much more playability does the game have the moment you start installing mods? And that, again, is a perfect example of a developer understanding gamers. You have a weird game library. What does your game library consist of? I am actually very low on ammo. Uh, where am I supposed to be going? Oh, I think I'm just supposed to be chilling over here.
I have some on Xbox, Wii, Nintendo, Switch, and like 10 on computer. Yeah, you see, I, like only my wife plays um, PlayStation. I don't. I only play PC. So I've got like 160, close to, maybe more, maybe less. I need to double check um, games on yeah, PC. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, I, oh fuck, I'm trying to think where my like love and passion for gaming started, and I'm gonna be able to say like I think I was like six, seven years old, watching my dad play on like Windows ninety five or Windows ninety eight, watching him play like the original Doom and the original Wolfenstein, etc., etc. And then from there, just over the years, it's just been incremental increases in the strength of the computer, what I'm playing. And yeah. Mine was on the Wii with Super Mario. So much shit happening on my screen right now. I've taken quite a bit of damage. I need to heal myself. What do you think of the game so far? What do you think of the stream so far? Like, I'm trying to get feedback from everybody as much as I can about improvement and being better, etc, etc. I'm trying to grow the community as much as I can, but yeah, it's it's been slow. I think it's nice all streamers start something. No, 100%. Like, I'm definitely not expecting to be fucking hundreds and thousands of viewers and subscribers and fucking gift donations and turn this into. No, like, I've only been doing this for just over a month. Like, I can tell you exactly how many days I've been streaming. So, I know there's going to be a lot of room for improvement. I just want to make sure that I'm continuously improving, that I'm not becoming stagnant. Replenish the hive, then eggs back down for experiments. Say bread, dinos, compañeros. Now where the fuck am I going? Launch 
destroyed. Someone's gonna drop from the ceiling, it has to. Like you see, there may be some interesting commentary, like start... Like start insulting the NPCs randomly. <laughs> you. Fuck you. <laughs> I can't believe you just made me do that. <laughs> Start depressurization when you are ready. Okay, we're about to get into a nice big fight. When you hit that, every Xeno in the vents will pour out. Doc, <laughs> Treat it like a contract room. Like, I've never done streaming before in the past. Hell, to be honest, I never really watched many streamers. And one day, I don't know, something just like, something that's in my head was like, you know what? What is stopping you from doing this? Absolutely nothing. So I decided to do it. And I was actually quite impressed. Within the first, uh, I think all 14 followers, like my most recent follower was three days ago. But that person followed and then unfollowed again. So my most recent follower was four days ago. And that was a gentleman or individual by the name of Trey Petty. And then you were just before that. So you were also four days ago. Like. So I got all 15 um, followers that I do have. Within the last. Um, like month and a half. So I don't think the. Time I've spent streaming. Versus the amount of followers I've got so far is bad. I just want to make sure that there's actual continuous improvement. To make sure it doesn't stagnate. And to try and get the average viewers up. Because one thing I note is. Like at one point, I got the viewers up to like six, seven views. And like right now, it's dropped back down to two. So I just need to know how I can ensure that I maintain that engageability. Understanding also that my face is not on the stream, because I know a lot of people want their face, want to see faces. I do have a schedule for streaming. It is on my um, on my Twitch page. I do try and stick to the games that I play as much as I can. So, but the times are exact or oh, guaranteed almost every single time I've streamed, and I haven't missed a day. I think I've missed two days, but like every single day, half past nine my time, I start streaming. Yep, the schedule and everything is there. What I stream though is just a problem because like that depends on what I'm in the mood for. It's a big room. This will take time. Right on time. Here come the bugs. Keep them off us. Offline yourself, Paul. Um not really. If I'm being 100% honest, not really. And I'll be honest, I, I just don't think I'm smart enough for one of those games. Okay, let me put it this way. Like, if I had to play Tetris, like, yeah, I'd be able to play it to a point of somewhat competence. But I wouldn't be able to play it to the point that people would want to expect or see. My personal opinion on games like um, Tetris and that kind of stuff is... That is very, 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 very niche-specific games. And 
when you watch streams like that, you're technically looking for the experts. You technically want the person that can do the hardest of the hardest challenge. You don't want some idiot like me flopping around trying to figure out does this block fit. Oh, am I missing something? Yeah, bitch, I'm trying to get there. How do I get downstairs? Oh, here it is. If this bitch asks me one more time who's gonna hit the hydraulics, I'm gonna stab him in the face. Minecraft, I don't mind playing. Minecraft, I really don't mind playing. The only thing is, once again, I ain't no Minecraft expert. I don't know all the recipes. I don't know all the uh, speedrun strats and stuff like that. Like, I ain't the best builder. Like, I've played it myself quite a bit. But don't expect, like, Dream SMP or the Hermitcraft server kind of stuff. Like, you definitely ain't getting that from me. That's a big boy. Running through ammo so goddamn quickly in this game. But I'm actually enjoying this. I'm having more fun with this than what I thought. I never actually gave this game a chance when it first came out. I think I bought this game, installed it, did the tutorial, and then just never played it any further i think it's been like a solid like six months that i've had this game and i've touched it once Oh no, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Ooh. I was definitely gonna get fucked up if that thing stuck around me. Okay, got some cash, got a compensator, and then got the Vulcan. I leveled up, my gun got some XP, and so did my submachine gun. Okay, how shit was my accuracy? 39%. And I got 240 kills. Not bad. And return to base. Tonight, I might only still be going for like another 12 minutes. I normally try and stick my sessions to like two, two and a half hour sessions. Now, 
that's another thing that I am aware of. I don't stream as long as other people do. I get that, I respect that, and I know that will always be a shortcoming for me. The issue is, I'm a 30-year-old grown man with a wife and a 9-to-5 job. So, during the day, I'm working. In the evenings, I obviously got to spend time with the missus, got to make dinner, got to do the normal chores, exactly, uh, and that kind of stuff. And then I normally only start streaming later in the evening. Um, only start work, only start streaming later in the evening, about half past nine my time. And then I also can't stream until three, four o'clock in the morning because I've got to work the next day. So I only end up streaming till about midnight, maybe one o'clock in the morning, maybe. But that all depends on how the stream goes. Because I've had lots of times where it's like just me sitting here. And then there's no point to continue the stream. So I just end the stream a little bit earlier. So I am a project manager for a pharmaceutical company. That is my nine to five. Stability for hits and effects takes up to 10 times, okay? Increases reload speed and accuracy. Nope. Increases accuracy and weak point damage of handguns. Nope, I'll stick with that. Can I put this anywhere? Modifiers, compatibility matrix. While this ability is active, you deal 10% more damage. Compatible with charge coils and sentry guns. Yes, where can I put this? Charged coils. Nope, I want it for the sentry gun. Thank you. And then cores. Oh, so cores, I'm guessing I put inside there. Modifiers. Equipped. That's actually quite nice. You get modifiers that. Uh, oh, okay. Very nice. Do you stream at all, Blue? thinking about it go for it brother absolutely nothing is stopping you is there an FOV setting on this okay nice Um, I don't actually see that there's an FOV option for this because I feel like I'm sometimes a little bit too zoomed on on the back. Nah, oh, well, fuck it. And how did your one or two go? Did you feel comfortable? Did you feel uncomfortable? Because I remember the very first time I my very first live stream, I was fumbling over my words. I could not complete the sentence and I felt like anybody who sees this was gonna judge the absolute fuck out of me but I realized it was my first stream so I didn't I was just like fuck it it's probably gonna be a failure but it means there's room for improvement I almost like what Hanukkah had we'll do a good time you Ooh, elevated to hell Wait, can I move this bitch? Yes, I can. Let's make it a bit smaller. 
let's put it right there. Elevated to how? Yeah, I like that. Nice. I'm definitely doing that on my gun as well. Right? It, it's so difficult because the first couple of times, the first couple of times you stream, that's exactly what you're doing. You're speaking to a wall. You're speaking to yourself. You're speaking into a... Like, I went and bought myself like a professional fucking microphone to speak to myself with. Like, it broke my brain, but I realized that that's unfortunately what we're going to have to do if we want to have any kind of success. Extended duration. Um, that way. Let's put you over there. Nice, my shock coils are now better. Yeah, I get you. Trust me, the first time I also streamed, I was like, this feels uncomfortable. Like, I don't mind, like, talking to myself when I'm walking around the house and doing chores and that kind of stuff, but I feel really fucking retarded when I sit here playing a game, talking to some people that I hope will eventually join in. Because obviously the last thing that you want is that you're not talking. And then somebody does quickly jump in, and you don't notice that there's somebody new in your in your um, in your stream, and then it's just uncomfortable because then the person joins in, they're expecting a streamer, and there's nothing happening. But then it's also kind of weird because then one person joins in, and all they hear is a streamer talking to themselves. Yeah, it's it's uncomfortable in the beginning that's why i like it when there's at least two or three people in the chat somebody to talk to so i don't feel like a complete idiot <laughs> i think i'm gonna do one more mission and then i'm gonna call it actually combat rating is 238 my combat rating. Oh, he's 238. Never mind. Like, I don't know if you're going to be here at the end of the stream, but, like, you'll hear, like, the little speech that I give. And <laughs> you'll see what I mean by it. it's... Fire. Remember, we're looking for friendlies. The very first time I said the whole speech, saying goodbye and telling people where to go and that kind of stuff, I fucked it up so badly. Like, I still sometimes fumble over my mouth, but at least now I, I'm a bit more consistent. Yes, I will be streaming tomorrow, and it'll probably roughly around the same time. That'll be the plan, at least. 
but I normally, so on the Discord or on um, Twitter, I normally do send out a notification if I'm not going to be streaming that night. I am running very low on ammo again. Dinos rolling up from behind. Okay, there's a lot coming. Put down a sentry gun. Throw down one of those. They can get shocked. This shit's finally done. I need ammo. I need ammo. Oh fuck off. If one of these things still jumps on me, I'm gonna freak out. I'm taking so much damage. Ammo. Thank god. Make sure everything is reloaded, and then I can pop up on this, kill myself quickly, and then grab another mid pack, and we're good to go. I hate the fact that this pistol is so good, but you have to be so fucking accurate. There we go. Okay, where exactly am I going? Oh, I'm just chilling over here. Okay, well then you can... I'm actually more accurate with yes I do every single live stream that so I don't make videos specifically for YouTube all of my past live streams do get posted onto my YouTube channel yes it's normally about a 24 hour delay because obviously it's got to upload and do all the um, all the normal shit to try and get a video up there but yeah every single one of my past live streams do go onto YouTube as well but no, I don't make videos for YouTube specifically, meaning editing and intros and all that kind of stuff. No, I don't do any of that.
from Pala Station? Yes, I'm Security Chief Cynthia Rodriguez. Now, how the fuck am I supposed to get there? Oh, come on, that I find bullshit. Come on, let's be honest. Real life, I can just climb that little rock and I'm at the door. But no. Like, I'm supposed to be there, but how do I get there? Oh, that's stupid. Well, this grenade helped fucking nothing to keep that person off my ass. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my god. Okay, you can take that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. God damn, okay. Like, am I supposed to be holding a specific position or? It's one for you. One for you. One for you. Okay. You know what? Let's just hold this corner. This goes down. This goes down. I'm actually out of ammo on my fucking pistol for once and not on my main gun. Guns are full. Nah, let's get the fuck on with this. Oh yeah, we definitely know what's happening, yeah.
Fucking hell, this game's actually a lot more intense than what I thought it was going to be, but I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I thought it was going to be as well. Us coming from the rear. Oh fuck, I need to heal. Thank you. Is something gonna jump on me? Thought so. Hey, we're actually fucking outside. I'm guessing I need to hold myself down over here. There's a button upstairs. Completely missed that. What's this? Phosphorus pop up mines. Actually, let's do this. Uh, phosphorus pop up mines. Let's get everything started at least, and I can go downstairs and drop the mines off. Okay, I'm about as good as we're going to be. Shit got intense, brother. Okay, that's fucking insane. You never miss, money on that. Well, why the fuck isn't she just chilling with us? Not just okay. I know we're going into a building, but you could have fucking been there from the beginning. I don't think the company built this. She fucking could have been there from the beginning, right?
Okay, well, that motherfucker gets like a beat two and a half. There's the opportunity to complete. Okay. I'm at the spooky door. What are we doing now? Alright, we need to go through the spooky door. Nope, apparently I'm in the wrong place. Rendezvous at the gate. That's what I did. I was there. I've been there the whole time. Did I glitch out this mission because I accidentally was standing inside the door from the very beginning? That'll be stupid. Yep, I think that's what happened. Because I'm here. Rendezvous at the door. Yep. I had to run away and then come back. That's fucking stupid. But at least that that's mission completed. How did I do? Ah, got a new pistol, got a new vented flash hider, and then got some more cash. My gun and my pistol have still not leveled up, but I have. I'm on level 3. Nice. 46% accuracy, 203 kills. Not too bad. We made contact with Wayland Utah survivors race. led by Cynthia Rodriguez. She claims they're safe in a company. So all I want to do first is load out. Pistol. Weak point damage. Yep, always. Got a secondary pistol. Okay. So, hmm. much less accuracy, much less stability, a lot less damage. Oh my god, it goes from 412 to 80. Nope, I'm keeping my pistol. I don't mind the fire rate. Fire rate for me is not that important. Not in a game like this. In this game, you want accuracy to be able to hit those weak points, etc. Um, equipment. Nice. Okay, so... Consumables, consumable. So these are things that I can actually take with me into fights. But I think they've got limited uses. Yeah. I'm not going to take that. I automatically come with the sentry gun. So I'm not worried about that. Yeah, let's rock a helmet. And then... Oh. Okay. Actually quite a bit of customization to this. Inventory, I've already done everything. So my character is sorted. Nice. I like the fact that actually there's a helmet now, so there's actually a purpose to survive. But I think that's where I'm going to call it for a night. Blue, thank you very much for being here. I do appreciate it. 
ever since you've basically um, followed me, you've been there for almost every single stream except for last night, I think it was. I think. But thank you very much to everybody that did join the live stream. It really does mean a lot to me. For those of you that don't know, all of my past live streams do get posted onto my YouTube channel for your viewing pleasure at a later date. That way, if you miss the stream, there's a place for you to catch up. Also, I do have a Discord channel now. It's a place where you as a community can get together, talk shit, hang out, have fun outside of the live streams. Also, I am going to ask, we are trying to reach the 50 follower um, goal that I've set. In order to do that, I'm going to need help from every single one of you. Reach out to friends, reach out to family, share it on social media, reach out to any kind of discords or platforms that you know. Anywhere that you can share this information would be really appreciated and help grow the community. But until next time, I hope you will have a lovely evening and or day, depending on where you're from. Look after yourselves, much love, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.